Peace be with you. Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. My name is Alan Kiesler, and we are continuing our class on why are there different religions. And we're going more and more into depth on why there are different types of religion. Even within one religion, there are different types of religion. Uh, and there are also different types of religion amongst the different religions. But the question we're pursuing in depth now is about God. And specifically today, we're going to discuss whether God can be seen. And what I'm proposing, <coughs> what I've been told, is that different types of people will be benefited by different understandings about this point. That is, for some people, it's better that they believe, that they understand, they've been told that God is invisible. God cannot be seen. And for other people, it's beneficial to be told and to get the understanding that God can be seen. And of course, if that's the understanding, then how, when, why, other questions would arise. Would God be seen? So first... Uh, I just want to mention that within every religious tradition that I know of, there are some sorts of people, some people, who believe that no one has ever seen God. In fact, you cannot see God because even God doesn't have any form to be seen. Uh, and within that same religion, there are other people who have the opposite idea, that God does have form and God can be seen either after death, when we go to heaven, if we go to heaven, <laughs> we can see God there or we'll see God there. Uh, and other people who even believe it's possible, maybe not with these eyes, but with the spiritual eyes, with the heart, to see God even before death. Or, as some people say, you have to learn to die before death <laughs> to have that sort of vision. So I will start just by mentioning in the Christian tradition, right, in the Bible, in the New Testament, or in the Injil, uh, it is plainly said by John, the Apostle John, both in the Gospel of John and in the Letter of John, it is said that no one has seen God. No man can see God. Um, yet, in the same Injil, in the Gospel of Matthew, I think in this case, I don't remember exactly which of the Gospels have this statement, more than one maybe, but it is stated that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's the exact wording. So what is this contradiction? So there are different ways to explain it. Um, but the point I'm making in this class today is that maybe those two different answers are there because they are appropriate for different types of people. Uh, in other words, if you are told that, you know, no one has seen God, then that will remove all sorts of claims that people might make, false claims that people might make about seeing God because they've been told that no, no man, no human being can see God or has seen God. But on the other hand, if it is said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, that will be an inspiration for people who want to see God to become pure, to lead a holy life. So that's one explanation, I've been told, how to explain that. One explanation is that different sorts of people are benefited uh, by these different explanations or these different understandings. In the Muslim tradition also, there are similar dual dualities or different ways of understanding whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the original supreme source of everything and the ultimate goal of everything and the all-powerful who can do anything in a second, whatever he wants, in a moment, whatever he wants. That omnipotent original source of everything, some people say, is so powerful, all-powerful, that there's no way we can even come near to him, just like you cannot get near to the sun. The sun is too hot and blazing. You cannot get near the sun. If you try to get near the sun, you'll get burned up right away. So... That example is often given. And there's even the famous uh, incident mentioned in the Quran 
where the uh, Prophet Moses, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he uh, wanted to see God, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, uh, if you see that mountain there, if I shed my light on it, what would happen? So he did that, and the mountain was disintegrated just by the light of God falling on it. So many Muslims, and for them this understanding, I believe, is good, they conclude that therefore it's impossible to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that story there shows that even Moses could not see God. Even Hazrat Musa, Islam, the great prophet of Allah, he was not able to see Allah. So how could we possibly see Allah? Or how could uh, any person see Allah? So again, this is a little, it's interesting how this works, but some people can be benefited by having that understanding that no, no way you can see God. So just try to be humble and serve uh, and don't claim that you've seen God. Don't believe anybody that says they've seen God. That's good for them to have that understanding. But just like in the case of the Christian teaching that blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, if somebody is very, very anxious and desirous to see God, there are other explanations. And uh, of course the main uh, example in the Muslim tradition of somebody seeing God or seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When he went on his journey to heaven, the Miraj, it says in the Quran that he came before Allah at a distance of only two bow lengths and he saw him, he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, then there are different in interpretations of that. And some people say, no, 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 he didn't see Allah, he saw Gabriel the angel Gabriel, that's what it's talking about, because he can't. He couldn't have seen Allah because Allah cannot be seen. So why are these different interpretations there? The whole point of this class is that for some people it's better to have the understanding that God is invisible and cannot be seen, and for other people it is more beneficial to have the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be seen, and in fact it's widely accepted uh, because there are very clear hadiths about it, that after uh, death, when one goes to heaven, then one will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plainly, or can see Allah himself uh, as the full moon. There's one famous hadith, which I recently quoted also on my Facebook page. Uh, one can see, the, as, as we can see the full moon <laughs> with our eyes, same way we will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then. Um, <clears throat> and whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on his night to journey to heaven, the Maharaj saw him or not, saw Allah Pak directly or not, there are different understandings, there are different interpretations, and that is good, that's not bad. That doesn't mean there's something wrong, it means that the different understandings are good for different types of people. So this is the, really the theme of this whole series this, of classes, why are there different religions, uh, different religions, different understandings within each religion are beneficial for different types of people. <laughs> All right, let's see what questions or comments we may have. <laughs> this is a very interesting discussion. Let's see if anybody brings up uh, some good questions about this. So again, I'm not going to read all the hellos and how are you and things, Assalamu alaikum, there are many of those. But I will just look. Okay, here we have Acha Shiroz Ansari. If different religion is suitable for different types of peoples, then why are we spreading the teaching of Islam to different types of peoples? Um, well, everybody wants to spread their religion because they experience it as good uh, and they benefited a lot from it, so they want to share that with other people so they can benefit also. Um, so there's nothing wrong, it's very good. Not only Muslims should do that, but Christians who have benefited so much mm -hmm. from their uh, experience of studying and following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, they also should spread their understanding. They, that is good, nothing wrong. They have benefited from it. So naturally, if they love other people, they will also want to 
give them the opportunity to get the same benefit that they got. So the same is true of every religion. So people of every religion will naturally want to spread their religion. If they've had some benefit from it and they love other people, they will want to share it in that way. Um, so that's why everyone, not only Muslims, but everyone will want to spread their religion. That's good. Um, of course, it's not good to try to force it on people <laughs> and to condemn people that you're going to go to hell if you don't <laughs> accept my religion. Uh, first of all, no religion really teaches that. Many people think their religion does teach it, and they may believe that. But uh, So it, is, it should be done very, very humbly, lovingly. Uh, when we preach, we teach. Uh, we should always be very, very humble and loving and never forceful. La ikra fi al-dini. The Holy Quran says there's no force, no uh, impelling people. You must do this or this. No, very kindly and lovingly. All this teaching must be done. Okay, Silvia Hurtado Mamish says, Assalamu alaikum, be with you. Thank you very much. Peace be with you also. And uh, let us see, Maja Jazba says, Please, peace, mercy, and blessing be upon you. Oh, automatically translated. Okay, let me. See, I'm not going to read all of these questions. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, In Ali Sunnat, Aqida, people say that some uh, Yali, oh, Valis, I guess, it. some uh, Valis of God has seen Allah, but other people of Aqida, not what you say. Yes. Uh, in every religion, actually, the same dispute or Maybe not dispute, but different points of view is there. Some people say that uh, in the Christian tradition, in the Bible, there are some mentions uh, of people who saw God, met God, spoke with God, uh, and then other people interpret, no, 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 that wasn't really God, that was angels of God or messengers of God that they saw. So the same difference. Some people say one, some people say the other. And that's not bad, because some People benefit from the understanding that people have seen God and other people benefit from the understanding that you cannot see God. So, Immu Ali Imran says, Assalamu alaikum, please remember in your special prayers. Okay, I will do that. Immu Ali says, what's your views about Jabro Qadr? I don't know what Jabro Qadr means or what it is. So you'll have to explain that to me. F.K. Shahid says, We can see the Allah in every Sufis, especially in over mother, just love, nothing else or the other way. If we feel we can see and feel every time, every time, especially when you do zikr. Okay, that's a nice understanding. Um, Muhammad Hamza says, When... Ali Sunnat Aqida, people say that some walis of Allah has seen, oh, maybe this is the same, oh, no, so have seen Allah in their dream, then other people says that way, Hazrat Musa cannot see Allah in his dream. Uh, yes, so I think you're referring maybe to that same passage in the Holy Quran, where it talks about Hazrat Musa, Islam, uh, being unable to see God, and Allah told him, if, if can you see me? If that mountain there can stand when my light is shined on it, then you can. So the mountain was evaporated or disintegrated just by the light of Allah falling on it. So uh, I just explained that, yes, that is a good teaching, understanding for many people. <laughs> but there are other ways to interpret that. I didn't go into detail, but we say that God did not remove the veil of his light. The light of God is so powerful that it will evaporate or disintegrate a mountain. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes, he can remove that veil of light or he can remove that curtain of light that surrounds him, uh, which is so powerful and that no mountain could stand it. But Allah Pak, he can remove that veil of light or that curtain of light that is so powerful. And then one can see Allah personally. That's the way it's possible. Maybe not 
now, but after death at least, it is possible to see Allah when he removes that veil or curtain of light. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, has Prophet Musa see the Allah Almighty in dreams or not? I don't know. But he, he did see the burning bush. Uh, as with Musa, alayhi islam, he, Prophet Moses, he saw a bush that was burning, but was not burning up. The bush was burning, there were flames, but it didn't burn up. So then he understood, and then the voice came, speaking to him uh, that this is the sign of God or <laughs> this is somehow God is present in that burning bush. So there's a miracle. So Hazrat Musa Islam, he saw that burning bush. Um, but what he saw in dreams, some other way, I don't know about that. Maybe you can help understand, help me understand that. Uzmat Tanoli says, Allah says that by remembering me, you can find peace in your heart. And in this way, we can at least feel God. Yes, so that's a very nice point. Uh, we can always feel peace uh, just by remembering God. By remembering God is our best friend. God is all-powerful. He can do whatever he wants. And because he's our best friend, he will certainly do what is best for us. So just by remembering that one fact, we immediately become peaceful. At least as long as we are trying to serve him sincerely, <laughs> then we get great peace simply by remembering Allah, by remembering that he is all-powerful and so great, and he is our best friend. <laughs> okay, Munir Akbal says, Islam okay, I'm not reading these statements. Uh, Dr. Ashraf Abbasi, good to see you, sir. After a long pause, pray for you and your family. Best wishes for New Year. Stay happy, healthy, and have a COVID-19 free New Year 2021. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ashraf Abbasi Sahib. Uh, okay, again, people are making comments that I'm not going to read all these comments. Uh, Saath John does say, Sir, if you leave live in Pakistan, from which community do you impress, please? Um, I am impressed by many people from many communities. So, I, I maybe you were meaning Su Sunni or Shia or... Sufi, Delvi or Brelvi, I don't know what you're asking about which community. But in every community, I have found wonderful people. Uh, and in every community, some people that aren't so wonderful. <laughs> so I'm not uh, taking sides <laughs> among those communities. Muhammad Hamza says, Once a Sahabi came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Prophet was smiling. Then Sahabi asked the reason that he that then Prophet said, Allah is happy of your good deeds. So Prophet Muhammad was seeing Allah all the time. What do you say? Hmm. Um, yes, I would say that's possible. That in one way or the other, Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was seeing Allah all the time, in his heart at least. Um, of course, that is possible. Khurram Khan says, what is the system of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to run the universe? Do the other religions have similar teachings? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by system, but my understanding is that the system of Allah is, it's a, a system in which he has his representatives, and his representatives rule the different universes. Every universe, as I've explained this in great detail in some of my classes I gave in the Institute of All Intelligent Life classes and I think about three or four years ago, which you can see on my website, uh, there are millions, billions, I don't know how many. There are many, many universes, uncountable. For us it's more than we could count. And each and every universe, the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that he has not just one, but he has some servants who go to an area of space, you can say, and there they receive the energy from Allah Pak, and with that energy they create a new universe. And uh, there is one creator, one, um, I guess that's the right word, sub-creator is probably a better word, because not the original creator, but a servant of Allah, who on Allah's behalf takes up that service, that work 
of creating a universe. And there is always, I think it's always, at least in our galaxy, I know this is definitely the case, and maybe other galaxies, so I really don't know, but from extraterrestrial sources, we have this information that that one sub-creator uh, goes to that area of space and creates a universe there. And then that sub-creator is not alone. He comes with companions. And uh, at least two of those companions we know in some detail about, uh, they are, one would be his friend, you could say, or advisor, and the other would be his, <clears throat> I don't know what's the right word to use, but that other close companion of the person who creates the universe, uh, it's so easy to misunderstand these things that I'm hesitant to even talk about it, but, uh, and again, this is in our universe, I know this for a fact. In our universe, um, the original person who was sent here by Allah Pak to create this universe, he came onto this planet as Hazrat Isa alayhi islam. This is my understanding from very, very clearly stated in some extraterrestrial sources. And his intimate companion and advisor who came with him came on this planet as Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So those two personalities are uh, high officials, you could say, in the system of Allah for the universe. And that third personality, uh, who is generally described as feminine, uh, came on our planet, both as the mother of Jesus, that is, the Holy Virgin Mary, and also, um, this is not from extraterrestrial sources, this is from what I have been told, that same personality appeared as the daughter of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Fatima, Fatima Zohra. So, so these amazing personalities are part of the system of Allah in our universe. But there are millions and billions of other universes who also have... I, I, I think it's a similar system. I don't know if it's the same system. I think it's quite likely, but maybe not. But at least I know in our universe that is the system. So uh, I don't know about uh, in other religions or in Muslim religion exactly what sort of details there might be about the system of Allah. Uh, of course, then there are many subordinate, what, we, what word we could use, administrators, <laughs> or persons who have different roles or different functions in each universe. There are angels and archangels, just like Angel Gabriel, who brings specifically messages. Uh, there are other high personalities. And then under them, they have their... Uh, subordinates also who help them. So there's a vast, vast system of universal uh, government, if you want to say that, <laughs> a system of Allah for our universe. And other universes, I would guess, they have similar sort of systems. Okay, very, very good question. Thank you very much. I'm glad I was able to give <laughs> some answer to that. F.K. Shahid says, Sufi has said, if your inner eye is open, you can see Allah is everywhere. Sometimes Allah comes in common people form for your help or sometime for examine someone, as I have listened from our elder. I feel it's true. Okay, yes, that's a very nice understanding, I would say. Thank you. Muhammad Hamza says, Why Allah Almighty had not removed the curtain in case of Hazrat Musa? That's a very good question. Um, it's possible that Musa didn't know about it, didn't have that understanding. Just because he was a prophet does not mean that Hazrat Musa Islam somehow had uh, infinite knowledge. In fact, we know because of the story in the Quran itself of uh, Hazrat Khazr Islam meeting Hazrat Musa alayhi islam, that 
Hazrat Musa alayhi salam obviously had some limitations in understanding. Um, so that's one possible explanation. Uh, Allah Almighty did not remove that curtain for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And maybe it's possible that the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, did not even have an understanding about the curtain. That's possible. But I don't know for sure, but that would be my guess. Uh, Nabil Raja says, Yes, God is our best friend. Thank you. Muhammad Hamza says, Say my salam to Prophet Muhammad. Humble request. Muhammad Hamza Sahib, I've said many, many times, you don't have to ask me to say salam to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You can say salam to him yourself. You Right now, you simply think about Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Very good if you recite the Durood Sharif also, and you feel his presence, and you say salam, salam alaikum, whatever name you like, Hazur, <laughs> and he will hear you. You don't need to ask anybody else to convey or to say your salam to him. You can say it directly. He will hear you. I believe that. He is, he is certainly uh, available to all of us all of the time. That is, he is not an ordinary human being. He is a human being. He comes as a human being on our planet, but he can also be present with each one of us. Whoever thinks of him, uh, he is present and aware of you. And if you simply offer your salams to him yourself, he certainly will receive them. You don't need anybody else to give them to him from you. <laughs> Muhammad Hamza, have you seen Prophet Muhammad? Peace be upon him. Yes, I have. Udasir um, Khasa says, greetings, automatically translated. Sorry. Okay, there's more comments that are not about this topic. I'm not going to read them all. Mm, Nabil Raja says, good to see you, sir. You are so sweet and so lucky that you see Prophet Muhammad wasallam pray for my father as he is sick. Yes, I'm very, very lucky. I don't know why I was given such good mercy and fortune to see Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but it happened to me, so I, therefore I say I know. <laughs> if he can appear to me, he can appear to anyone if he wants to. We can't tell him to, but he can if he wants to. So uh, very, very lucky or very good fortune or special mercy from Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, certainly we pray, Nabil Raja, for your father also. Muhammad Hamza says, In the age of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as Hazrat Khizr was included in Where's with Sahaba? Uh, I don't know if that's a question, was he? Or he, he was just stating that he was. I don't know, but uh, it, I, th I certainly think he would come. <laughs> when the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is appearing on this planet, certainly Hazrat Khazar would like to come <laughs> in one way or the other and join with him. F.K. Shahid says, I personally feel this in my troubles time. Even I never ever seen these people, but they are very loving and cooperative. Then you just astonished for some time. What is this powerful blessing? After that, you thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, very nice. Very nice point, Fatima Ji. <laughs> you are right. It is so wonderful when we experience the mercy of Allah and the blessing of Allah. Uh, it is astonishing, as you say. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm happy you are experiencing the presence of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala, in that way, and are astonished by His mercy and love and. Muhammad Hamza says, what do you mean with sub-creator? Is it a human prophet or a vali? Can a product of Allah can produce a product? Um, <clears throat> I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, these creators of each universe, sub-creators, they are servants of Allah, and Allah has given them the power. They have no independent power. They are servants of Allah. But Allah gives them the power and the intelligence to create a universe. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself the source of the eternal spiritual world. And he is the creator of everything. Everything comes from him. But he has servants who do certain jobs on his behalf also. He does not personally, uh, directly create all each and every universe. But he has a servant to create each 
universe. That is not my statement. That is a statement of extraterrestrials. Uh, and you can read it uh, in the book called Urantia, U-R-A-N-T-I-A. There is a book called Urantia book, which uh, is definitely from extraterrestrial sources. I don't think it is 100% perfect. In fact, I'm sure it's not. But it has a lot of very, very uh, good information coming from extraterrestrials about these matters that we don't know very much about from other sources. Uh, we don't know in detail about the process of creation. But that book does tell from people who know about it because they may have been there to observe it or they <laughs> may have learned it from these great personalities directly. So they know about this information, so they have shared it with us. So it, these books, like the Arantia book, they are appropriate, again, for certain types of people. Like every scripture uh, has a certain understanding for a certain type of person. So this Arantia book also has a specific audience that it's meant for. And uh, so uh, for some people it might be difficult or even impossible to appreciate, but for other people it's very beneficial. So I found that book very beneficial, but I, I'm certain there are things in it that are not so appropriate. And it itself says that. It says that it was, it was uh, given to humanity about uh, in the first part of the 20th century, I can't remember exactly, 1920s or 1930s, sometime about then. And the authors, there is not just one author, there are many authors, uh, different extraterrestrial authors, but they were working together, I guess, to uh, give this knowledge to humanity. They themselves say that this is dated. Hmm? In other words, the book that they are giving it has limitations. They themselves say that because it's at a certain time for certain people and they weren't allowed to say things that they knew that were things that would have not been able to be understood or appreciated by people at that time. So they had to tailor their teachings according to the people they were teaching. That's always the case, of course. So uh, I'm just saying that book, I don't consider absolute, perfect, revealed truth in every way, but it does have a lot of very good information from elevated extraterrestrial sources. You might call them angelic extraterrestrial sources. Okay, Sajid Nazir says, invite me for visit USA. <laughs> Don't come to USA. Everyone wants to come to USA. But uh, it's much better not to. <laughs> this is a hellish place. And of course, you can make a lot of money if that's what you want. You can come make a lot of money, but you'll experience a lot of hellish uh, things too here much better to not be in USA, actually, uh, and especially children. Uh, I have many Pakistani friends and people from other countries in Asia, especially, uh, who come here, and uh, if they're intelligent, when their children become a little older, no longer tiny children, and start going to school, and then I always advise them, <laughs> don't be here, uh, they will be ruined. By destroying, they will be destroyed. Their spiritual life will almost certainly be destroyed by the educational system here. So please take them back to Pakistan or wherever. And some of them have actually followed that advice, have done that. I think it's very good. And those that have not done that, they almost always, including myself, <laughs> almost always regret that their children went through this educational system in America. Uh, it is very, very bad. So uh, not only the educational system, but just living here. <laughs> Anyone, even adults, come here. It's uh, difficult to maintain the sort of holy life that it's much easier to maintain in Pakistan. Where now, of course, <laughs> American technology and systems and computers and cell phones have come to everywhere, so that has permeated everywhere. But that, unfortunately, that uh, degraded aspect of American life is uh, spreading everywhere, but it's still less influential in most other parts of the world than in USA. So don't, don't come to USA. <laughs> I would never want to invite somebody to come here and suffer the consequences. Of course, if you want to make money, then you might want to come. But if you want to have a beneficial life of spiritual progress, better not to come to USA. <laughs> Azam Khan says, Sir, Mira, Salam, Kabul, Ho, Aslam, Alaikum, Wa Alaikum, Salam. Thank you. I accept your blessing of peace. 
Muhammad Hamza says, have you seen Allah Almighty? Um, hmm. I can say that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told me don't answer that question. <laughs> so, Nabil Raja says, sir, I want to ask about Dajjal or Antichrist. Is he in this world or Jesus, or Jesus is coming soon? And these Freemasons are also planning against Jesus and Hazrat Mahdi. Uh, very good question. And uh, I don't, don't know the details about this, but I do know that this is the time. This time frame, we can say, is definitely that time in which the Jal or Antichrist and uh, Jesus, or return of the Messiah and of uh, Imam Mahdi, uh, this definitely is that time. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think just yesterday, perhaps, there was this discussion yesterday or day before about Imam Mahdi, and I said, and I repeat, because I've been told, it's very, very important that I should keep repeating this. Most people have very wrong understandings about Imam Mahdi al-Islam. In every religion, not only in Islam, these uh, and Christians also have very... Most Christians have very wrong understandings of what the return of Christ means. So most Muslims have very wrong understandings about the coming of Hazrat Imam Mahdi al-Islam. So that I know for sure, that most people, whether Muslims or anyone, have wrong understandings about the Jal and Imam Mahdi, Antichrist and Jesus coming. Uh, so don't be deceived by those misinterpretations. You just have to pray and ask for guidance for yourself, but be sure that many, many misunderstandings are there and being spread. Um, so are the Freemasons also planning against Jesus in Imam Mahdi? Maybe they're the, some of the ones who are spreading this misinformation also. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, but definitely there are, well, there are different types of Freemasons. Some Freemasons are sincere and good people who want to serve others, uh, but then the high-level satanic Freemasons they definitely are doing everything they can <laughs> to prevent the Imam Mahdi and Jesus Christ, the Islam's return, to fight them against them. Because they, they know the satanic Freemasons, or all satanic people, whether Illuminati or Zionists or whatever, all satanic people know that they will fail if they don't work very, very hard to promote the satanic agenda. And they, many of them understand that these prophecies are there about return of Jesus and coming of Imam Mahdi, so they want to fight against them, and I'm sure they are. <laughs> okay, but definitely I have no doubt this is that time period. All the, so many prophecies are clearly uh, being fulfilled at this time, not only in Muslim or Christian teachings, but other religions also. Native American religions also have the very same teaching about this time period. It clearly is this time period right now, which are what we call the last days or the day of judgment. That is, we're living in that time now. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, which universe had been produced by Prophet Muhammad? I think it is Jannat. Um, I don't really know the answer to that question. Uh, I do know, again, I have no external source, but this is my own, what I have been told, uh, that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he existed before the creation of this universe. Uh, he is an eternal light being, you might say, and uh, he was there, he was present there, and he was involved in the creation of this universe although the chief architect, you can say, or the chief sub-creator uh, was the personality, also eternal personality, uh, before the existence of this universe, who came as uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi islam on this planet. So the two of them were there, and the third was also there, who is also another eternal personality who appeared on our planet as uh, Hazrat Fatima Zohra, Anha, and as the Holy Mother of Jesus, Mary, Blessed Mary. Uh, so the three of them were there. I'm certain of this. And exactly what 
role each of them had, I don't know. But uh, and what if Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, created some other universe also? Maybe, I don't know. But he was involved in that way in the creation of this universe. So uh, Muhammad Hamza says, What are the names of your aliens' friends? What is their language? Um, well, two things. First of all, let me say, almost all the aliens, I don't like the word aliens, but almost all of the extraterrestrials that I have seen or met, they use telepathy to communicate. They do have their languages. Uh, I don't know any of them, but uh, I've heard, I know some words in different extraterrestrial languages because they are used also in our uh, languages. Just like names of God, especially, I know that the name Allah is also by extraterrestrials. The name Adonai, which is a Hebrew name of Allah, is also used by some extraterrestrials. And of course the name Toini is the one that my special extraterrestrial spiritual mother uh, uses. And her name is, well I don't know her name, what she calls herself, she never told me that, but uh, her name is Felicity. That name was given by a friend of mine who uh, has now passed on, but he was uh, in touch with many, many extraterrestrials. So he gave her that name. Um, I don't know any of the other names of any of the other extraterrestrials uh, that I have met. But you can find some of the names that you do. They sometimes use names and sometimes they don't because if they're fully telepathic, they don't need to have names like we do. If we want to call somebody, we have to call out their name. But uh, if you're telepathic, you don't need to call out somebody's name to call them. You just I mean, you just communicate directly to their mind without needing any names. So, um, and they do have, I know for a fact that there are many, hundreds, millions, billions, trillions, I don't know how many, unlimited numbers from our perspective of different languages. Uh, and they all have uh, their own names of God, which of course the most important thing in any language. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, you said that relationship with Israel is good, but Israel is doing very bad changes in their syllabus and has changed the law of wearing Haggad of women's and is instilling nightclubs in Muslim countries. Uh, yes, I have explained that in Israel there are two groups of Zionists. There are the Satanic Zionists and there are the religious God-believing Zionists. So um, the Israeli people, some of them are very good. I, I, know, I have known some and uh, they are very God-fearing and pious. And there are others who are have an agenda, which you are describing, of destroying not only Muslim countries, but destroying any religious uh, society or nation. Um, so those both groups of people are there. So as I explained, was it just yesterday or day before, that Hazrat Isa alayhi islam, uh, excuse me, Hazrat Khizr alayhi islam, he is, and maybe Hazrat Isa alayhi islam also, I don't know, but Hazrat Khizr alayhi islam, I know, is active in this effort to bring together Israel and the Muslim countries uh, because he understands that is necessary for world peace to be established. So he is behind this Abraham Accords, Ibrahim Accords. So um, it's not a simple. It's not that Israel is all bad and Palestine is all good or Pakistan is all good. or uh, in, this, in every country there are good people and there are bad people. So in Israel there are good people and we are praying, of course, that the people in Israel will, who are good will come to more power and control. Uh, just like in every country we are praying that the good people, the sincere people, will come in control. Like in Pakistan, we are very fortunate that uh, Imran Khan, who is definitely a very good and sincere person, that he has become the Prime Minister. That is a great blessing from Allah Pak. So uh, may that continue. May more good people come to assist him because there are many corrupt politicians in Pakistan, almost all of them. So it's very difficult. This is why we're having so much difficulty in America right now. There are many good people in America. Most people in America are actually very good. 
but there are some very, very powerful, evil, even satanic, selfish people who uh, are trying to control everything. And uh, they are very deceitful, uh, all fake. <laughs> so that's what's happening in America right now. There is this struggle going on between the good people and the bad people. Very prominent right now at this minute, <laughs> these days in America. Uh, but it's also in Israel. It's also in Palestine. It's also in Pakistan. The same struggle is going on everywhere. So the good people in every country must come together, uh, cooperate, come together as human beings, you know, not as persons of one nation or another nation. We must all come together in love, uh, learn to trust each other when we see that they're good, even though they may belong to a different religion or a different nation that we're supposedly enemies with. Uh, actually, there's only... for The real understanding is uh, that we are all, whatever country we belong to, whatever religion we belong to, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all descendants of... Adam and Eve, so we're all literally, we're brothers and sisters, maybe cousin, brother and sister, maybe second cousin, brother and sister, <laughs> maybe distant relation, but we're all relations, we're all brothers and sisters. <laughs> we're all relatives, not only human beings, even other extraterrestrials, we're all brothers and sisters. <laughs> so people of all nations are brothers and sisters, even Pakistanis and Israelis are brothers and sisters. <laughs> So Muslim countries and Israel will come together, uh, in love when we come together in prayer. That is the power. When we come together, and as I explained many, many times, when the Israelis begin praying namaz with the Muslims, especially in Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, and when the Jews, uh, not only, excuse me, when the Jews begin praying namaz and when the Muslims begin praying the Hebrew prayers that the Jewish people use together, that will be the foundation of love and trust and ultimately a world peace. So you are right that the satanic people in Israel are making very horrible things, instilling nightclubs in Muslim countries, whatever they're doing. Uh, they're also committing so many atrocities against the Palestinian people. That must be stopped. Uh, but the relationship between the Muslim countries and Israel will be, there will be recognition and there will be friendship, uh, but we all must be careful, not only in Israel or Pakistan, but in America and in China and in India. <laughs> in every country, there are bad people that we must be very careful about, and there are good people that we should establish friendship with and relationship with. Okay, F.K. Shah says, Babaji, yesterday you were talking about Alama Muhammad Iqbal that we discuss about Khudi. Uh, yes, Alama Muhammad Iqbal, Rahmatullah the great saint, great Sufi, great poet, great philosopher, one of the greatest personalities of the 20th century, no doubt. Uh, and his concept of khuddi is also very profound, perceptive, elevated, uh, to understand the true. The, the true self is the eternal uh, identity. Okay, Farhan Umar says, Jewish rabbi has claimed that he met Messiah and old some information what the world will be like in future and new world order. Can some meet Messiah? Most of the Muslims think what Jews refer to as Messiah is actually Antichrist. I don't know what Jewish rabbi you're talking about and what he's saying about what Messiah he met. I First time I heard about this, but... Uh, it's possible for people to meet these divine personalities, like the messengers of God, the Messiah, or the Holy Prophets, peace be upon them all. Um, but I don't know who this Jewish rabbi met. Maybe Antichrist, I don't know. Muhammad Hamza says, You are not answering thee. It means you have seen Allah Almighty, I can understand. Uh, I can only say, I can only repeat, <laughs> Holy Prophet Muhammad, he warned me, I guess you can say, he told me, don't answer this question, don't talk about it. Nabil Raja says, as you said, you meet or communicate with aliens, so their last prophet is also Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they have religions like us. 
I have talked about this issue many, many times. Um, extraterrestrials have different religions, you can call them that, or maybe their religions are not like ours also in other ways. And uh, I had a very long discussion <laughs> with one Sufi about this, and he insisted that Hazrat Muhammad wasallam is the last prophet ever on all planets, in all universes even, because that is his belief, that is his faith, that Hazrat Muhammad wasallam is the last prophet. Um, so I told him that's not the evidence I have from other planets. And uh, so I, I talked about this just one or two days ago again. So I have to repeat it. This is very important for Muslims to understand this. We think, Muslims, we think that our Sharia i Muhammadi, the Sharia that Hazrat Muhammad wasallam gave, is the last, final, eternal, and universal sharia everyone should follow but it's not possible because for example i gave uh, facing towards holy city of mecca the kaaba for praying is possible on our planet but it's not very practical on other planets what to speak of other star systems what to speak of other universes they don't face towards mecca when they pray <laughs> Um, and then I even went on, this is even more astonishing, which is very disturbing to some Muslims, but if you think about it, you'll have to understand, it's a fact. During the holy month of Ramzan, during the fasting, we fast according to the sun. Certain time before sunrise, at dawn, uh, we must begin fasting, and then after the sun sets sometime, then we can break the fast. We can open the fast. Um, what if you live above the polar circles, beyond the polar circles, and the sun never sets, or the sun never rises at the North and South Pole during the certain seasons of the year? The sun never rises. The sun never sets. So how can you follow that system of Ramzan even on this planet? Think about it. So we have a wrong understanding. That's I've been told. This Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has personally told me again and again, the Muslims misunderstand. They think that when, anyway, this people will start getting upset if I talk about this very much, but that Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet. Yes, he is the last prophet until the day of judgment on this planet. But on other planets... On other universes, prophets are coming all the time. Messengers from God are coming all the time and will continue coming. I have no doubt about that. Uh, so are there religions like ours? In some ways they are and in some ways they're different. I can say that. Uh, and in some other planets they also have Arabic language and they say Allah for the name of God and I don't know, actually, if they have namaz with the same words as we use. Um, I really don't know. I, I don't know. But definitely our idea, many Muslims' idea, that this system of religion that we have, this is the final system of religion, it's the universal system of religion, everyone from whatever planet, they should learn Arabic and say the name Allah and pray namaz like we pray. Uh, that is a, what should I say? Not a complete understanding. Uh, and not only Muslims, every religion. Christians also have a similar idea that their religions are the universal religion and everyone on other planets also should follow the teachings of Jesus. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And there are Hindus who believe even on the other planets they should follow our system of dharma. <laughs> Please don't be too disturbed if I answer your question. They don't have the same religion that you have. Most other planets, they have... Some religions are much more exalted and some religions are much on lower level. Uh, there are some beings who 
what is the right word? They are in constant communion with God, all of them. They are like angels. Uh, so there are different types of religions for different types of people on other planets also. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, can a human can change his body shape and can change into snake, lion, or anything what he want? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some people can. I've heard that some people have some sort of abilities like that, but I really don't know. Farhan Umar says, who are God and Magog and where are they? <laughs> you know, I will only say one thing about this. I don't know what is this Gog and Magog, but I have been told it's not Gog and Magog. It's Goog and Magog. <laughs> uh, just like in Arabic, it is Yajuj and Majuj. Uh, it is oo sound, not og and Ma not gog and magog, or gog and magog, but goog and magog. And in Arabic, there is no uh, ga sound. There's no gaf, only kaf. And for the gaf, they say ja. So the, they say yajuj and majuj, but actually it's yagog and magog. So what is this goog? <laughs> well, we know there's a very, very powerful and dangerous force in the world today, sort of an artificial intelligence, you might say, going by the name of Google. <laughs> so maybe there is some connection between Google and Goog and Magoog. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what may be God again, Magog or Yajuj and Majuj. In Sia Hussein says, Assalamu alaikum, whatever is happening to Muslims today, and all these things are written by Allah, and the Muslims have become very weak, yes. Now they will forget that they can liberate Palestine again. Um, until Hazrat Isa a.s. returns and Hazrat Mahdi a.s., Allah says in the Quran that on the day of resurrection I will gather all the Jews to their parents' land. And this is also due to the weaknesses of the Muslims themselves. Oh, I didn't know this. Uh, I've not, you know, really studied the Quran so closely as I know from Bible, because I studied Bible all my life until I was, you know, through my whole childhood and youth. I was always studying the Bible. My father was Christian minister, and both my grandfathers were. I went to Christian churches and Sunday schools and studied. So I know in the Bible, many places, is very clear prophecies that the Jews will return to the Holy Land in the time of the end, the day of resurrection. Uh, so I'm, I didn't know the Holy Quran also says that on the day of resurrection, Allah Pak would gather all the Jews to their parents' land. So, yes, that's true. But so glad, I'm glad you told me that. I didn't know that. So, therefore, <laughs> anyway, it's a contro controversial topic, but uh, definitely the return of the Jews to Israel However, it is part of some plan of God, some fulfillment of prophecy. And we can pray that the Jews who have gathered in Israel, they will become godly people and they will become true lovers of God and of all of God's creation, including the Palestinians and the Muslims. They will love the Palestinians and Muslims. And... Uh, that will be the real Jews. The real Jews will love the Palestinians and Muslims and will stop the atrocities and will help establish world peace. <laughs> but it is there in the Bible. Very many, many clear prophecies uh, about the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. And uh, I'm glad to learn that the Holy Quran also says that. I didn't know that. Okay, Manasir Zaidi. So, Mr. Allen, how would you define Ahamin? as he is a prophet of Alamin, not Alam. I don't know what Ahamin is. Maybe you mean Alamin? I'm not sure. Um, oh, I think I understand what you're asking. Hazrat Muhammad wasallam is Rahmatul Alamin, the mercy to all the planets, all the worlds, all the universes, you might say. Um, Definitely, I believe that. Um, 
That's a very interesting point. I don't know about this. I have never actually thought about this um, because I know that Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the descent upon our planet, Earth, of that great personality who came with the personality who came as Jesus uh, before the creation of this universe. So he definitely is a special mercy to this universe. Maybe other universes also. I don't know. I don't know about all the other universes, but I know he is the uh, original advisor to the sub-creator of our universe, and he was existing before the creation of our universe. So he's not an ordinary human being. He is. He came as a perfectly ordinary human being. He came, not a perfectly ordinary, but he came as a perfect human being. He came as a human being on our planet. But he also is an eternal light, an eternal person uh, who came to this universe before the universe had been created. He came here and assisted in the creation. So is he prophet of Alameen on the other universes also? I really don't know. <laughs> but he certainly is the pre-existing uh, ambassador, maybe is a good word, ambassador of God, Allah's personal representative, ambassador to this universe, to give us guidance and mercy. So he certainly is Ramatul Alameen. He is all the planets, all the places in our universe, he is a Ramat upon them, yes. But, and I have to stress this again, his Sharia, the Sharia Muhammadi, that is not the eternal religion of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the eternal religion of Hazrat Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is given on this planet, and it exists here now. It did not exist before. There was no uh, Shariati Muhammadi before Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And on other planets, there are many other. Even on this planet, there are other Shariats. So please try to understand this. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told me in 2012 he very very clearly, and again in 2017 he spoke to me very very clearly both times. He. Gave, he told me, and the first he said, you understand what it means to be a Muslim. Those who think they understand, they mostly do not. So most Muslims do not understand what it means to be a Muslim. Most Muslims do not understand what Islam is. Most Muslims think Islam means the Sharia, the Muhammadi. And if anybody follows the Sharia of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is a real Muslim. And if somebody doesn't follow that Sharia, then he's not a real Muslim. But what Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told me is that anyone of whatever religion who follows the Sharia of their religion and who is kind and loving and truthful, fair and just, does righteous acts, they are real Muslims. And if somebody follows the Sharia fully, I mean the laws, but is not loving and kind and is not truthful and honest and fair and just, they're actually not a Muslim. So please try to adjust this understanding or misunderstanding. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the eternal, pre-existing <laughs> ambassador of Allah, Pak, for this universe at least, maybe other universes, I don't know. But his Sharia, which he gave, when he came on this planet, 1400 some years ago, that Sharia is not the eternal deen Islam. It did not exist before the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was a Muslim, but he was not following the Sharia i Muhammadi. He was following another law of God. So try to understand this point. That is my humble request to all Muslims. Please try to understand what you think it means to be a Muslim. That's not all of you, maybe some of you have an understanding. But most Muslims, they think what Muhammad wanted, what the Prophet Muhammad wanted us to do was to be kind. Excuse me, this is what he told me, is the real meaning, to be kind and loving and truthful and honest, just and fair, moral, righteous, serving others. That is what it really means to be a Muslim. And this Sharia, that is secondary. And in fact, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's so wonderful. He really wants you to understand this. He's begging me to please tell my followers, peace, 
please, Muslims, understand that you don't know what it means to be a Muslim. What you think it means to be a Muslim, that's not what it means to be a Muslim. What it means to be a Muslim is to be loving. Islami paak tamatlab ki shariat ya muhabbat. Insani paak tamatlab ki jismi khak ya ruhi paak. Allah Iqbal rahmatullahi taught me that. So what does it mean to be a pure Muslim? Or what is pure Islam? It means to love. That is the soul. That is the eternal essence of Islam is to be loving. And the Sharia is the body. The body is also important, but not very important compared to the soul. The soul is eternal. The body is temporary. So this sharia i muhammadi is not the real part of Islam. The important part of Islam is love. <laughs> and of course, surrender to Allah Pak. So try to understand. And that is what Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, directly, personally told me that I understand what it means to be a Muslim. And they mostly don't. Who think they're Muslims, they mostly don't. So try to gain this understanding. Okay, Farhan Umar, very good question. What is the ultimate goal of humans? The ultimate goal, the goal of humans is to love and serve God and all of God's creation. <laughs> Hamza, Muhammad Hamza says, As the Prophet Muhammad warned you not to answer this question, so I conclude that Prophet knows the future and can know things in heart. Prophet knows the future. I I can't say anything about that. Muhammad Hamza says, but the followers of Jesus has changed the teachings of their prophet. Yes, <laughs> Muslims have also changed the teachings of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. People of every religion have changed the teachings. Of course, in Islam, the Quran, Pak, the Holy Quran has not been changed. The Bible has been some changes. Most scriptures, there have been some changes. In the Holy Quran, there have been no changes, or maybe some tiny changes, but uh, virtually no changes. There is some dispute about whether there were some tiny changes, but virtually no changes at all. Uh, so that is a difference, yes, between Islam and other religions. But unfortunately, the Muslims, although they have the Holy Quran in the original Arabic uh, in full, they have misinterpreted, misunderstood. Most Muslims have actually changed the teachings of their prophet. Muhammad, peace be upon him, and even totally misunderstood, gotten the wrong idea of what his teachings are, what his religion is all about. Islam means love and peace. Surrender to Allah means love of Allah and all of Allah's creation and peace. <laughs> that is Islam, not Shariati Muhammadi. That is only the external, temporary body, the essence, the soul of Islam. The real, pure Islam is love. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Muhammad Hamza goes on. Prophet Muhammad has a hadith on Gog or Magog that they will spread on earth before the last day. Well, <laughs> Google has certainly spread over the whole earth. <laughs> so we're in the last days. The final day of the last day has not come. The final part of the last day has not come, but uh, we are in the last days. In Siyahusim says, and on the one hand, I like the Jews very much because they do not lag behind in their things as the Muslims do. And God told us that you should worship better than the Jews. That means they are better um, than us. Used to talk and do what I have worshipped of the Jews is exactly the same as that of the Muslims. So we pray, and this is more, more important than any sort of disagreement or conflict. We pray daily in the namaz, we pray the, the Rud Sharif Ibrahimi. We pray for peace upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his family and his followers as hmm, we pray for peace upon Hazrat Ibrahim Islam and his family and his followers. So that means we are praying for the Jews. We are praying that Muslims may be like the Jews, getting the mercy, the peace and blessings of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So I think, I don't know exactly what you're saying, but I think it's that we should worship better than the Jews. So, <laughs> Yes. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Asif Ijaz says, this question is aside from what you're talking about, but you did mention a few days ago that Donald Trump will win the presidency eventually and take it away from Biden in the end. Do you still think that will happen? Uh, well, first of all, let me say that Trump will not take the presidency away from Biden unless Biden becomes the president. Biden is not the president yet. <laughs> and he may or may not become the president. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm certain of one thing. Whether Biden becomes the president or not, if he does, it won't last long. It cannot last long. Uh, and maybe he will never be president. I don't know. But uh, definitely Donald Trump really won the presidency. I have no doubt. It's very clear. Uh, there was a huge, massive election fraud. Of course, if I talk about this, <laughs> I, I may be banned from Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> So you cannot talk about these things unless you want to risk being banned. So anyway, uh, I still think that will happen, uh, that uh, President Trump will continue as the President of the United States. There may or may not be a short period when Biden becomes in that seat, but by fake, by cheating. Uh, but if he does, it won't last long. I'm sure of that, 100% sure of that. Insia Hassan says, Beautiful, a true Muslim must feel that his soul is floating in space and he does not see evil in people. <laughs> okay. okay, Muhammad Hamza says, I love you very much. Thank you. That's very kind of you to love me. I hope you... <laughs> if you love somebody, it means you do what pleases them. So please do what pleases me. Nabil Raja says, Are you, as you are guiding us about true Islam, and being Muslim is being loving to other people and community, then why all Muslims are divided in different parts, like Sunni, Shia, Wabi, Brelvi, etc. How we can fix it? Oh, very good question. Very, very good question. Thank you very much, Nabil Raja Saheb. Um, why are Muslims divided in different parts? There are two reasons. One reason is that Satan is always trying to divide people and Satan's cohorts, <laughs> Satan's chumchas, they are also always trying to divide and rule. If you can get Sunnis and Shias to fight against each other, then both sides are weakened and it's easier to control them. That's what the colonialists' plan was from the beginning. Of course, it was there before them also. But So one reason for the division is Satanic planning, to create division and differences and fighting amongst different groups. But the other reason is, as I've been telling in this entire series of classes, that different types of religions are good for different types of people. And even within one religion, different types of beliefs and understandings and groups are beneficial for different types of people. So that's also a reason why there are different sects in Islam and different religions also for a good reason also. The different types of, but everyone should be one in the sense of being kind and loving to each other. There should not be fighting amongst Sunnis and Shias or Delvis and Brelvis or anyone. There should not be fighting between Muslims and Christians and Jews or Hindus or Buddhists. Everyone should be together in love, understanding. We are all servants of the same God. We are all children of the same Adam and Eve. We are all family members. We should all be together in love. So. There are two reasons for these divisions. Um, but definitely, like in Iran, I was very happy to learn this. And also I know in Azerbaijan, and I said this the other day here in America, I was at a namaz service here in California, where Muslims of both Sunni and Shia were praying together. And in Iran, I've been told this, in those areas in Iran where there are majority Sunni, of course, mostly Shias in Iran. So in Shia areas, they have a Shia imam lead the prayers, and all the Sunnis in that area are invited to come in the mosque and pray behind the Shia imam. 
And in the Sunni majority areas, there are some in Iran, the Imam is a Sunni, and the Shias pray behind him, along with the Sunnis, of course. So that's very wonderful. That should definitely be done. Not only that, but I am saying (laughs) Christians and Muslims, Hindus and Buddhists, Taoists and Sikhs, Jews and Jains, <laughs> Zoroastrians, Parsis, and people of indigenous religions also, native religions, African religions, J- Japanese, all religions, people should come and worship together, call on the names of God together. Ya Allah, 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 Allah. Toeni, 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 toeni. Adonai, 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 Adonai. Ram, 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 Ram. Rikum ka, rikum ka, rikum ka, rikum ka. If people of different religions will come together like this, glorified God together in their own languages, that will have a very, very good result. But definitely at least... Muslims, Sunnis and Shias, and Delwis and Relwis, they should all be together, praying together, working together to spread true Islam. And people of different religions should be together, working together to spread the one true eternal teaching of God, which is love. Love and justice and truth, mercy, morality. So, yes. Okay, very, very good question. So how can we fix it? That because the people of the different sects to come together and pray together, glorify God together. Uh, and even people of different religions come together, pray together, glorify God together. We can that way fix all the divisions and fighting between different religions and different sects within every religion. Okay, Muhammad Hamza says, I am trying to do ziyarat of Prophet Muhammad through a murid of Baba Freed. Pray for me a humble request. Okay. And finally, I think our time is really up. <laughs> it's so late, I didn't realize. this. Happened. So many good questions now been an old man, well over an hour and a quarter. So uh, F.K. Shai says, With the power of love, you can overcome this divination. It's difficult, but not impossible. Thank you very much. And Munasar is very... Okay, this is very true. With the power of love, <laughs> anything is possible. So with the power of love, we can all come together in love. We can all come together as one, as servants of the same God and as children of the same Adam and Eve, members of the same family. We are all relatives. That is the Native American pray. I pray every day, at least every morning with Fajr and also during time during the day when I pray namaz, I also pray that prayer among others. We are all relatives. So let us all come together in love And whatever our understanding is of religion, whatever our understanding is of God, we can all be together, each benefiting by our own group or our own understanding, but coming together despite our differences in love. (laughs) Alhamdulillah. Even with the people of other planets, we come together as brothers and sisters in love. Okay, thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. May God protect us all.